Hello viewers, it's Peter Elgar Photography here again. I had a request on Flickr to show a video about my Olympus OM10 that I was given. Well the story is I was, I was given this by a lady who brought it up to the camera club and I thought, oh I don't want it, <clears throat> I've got the OM2N. So I gave it to another camera club member who had an OM1 but he never used it. So I thought, can I have it back? So he contacted me, said, you can have it back, but it's not working. The winder's all jammed, and in the mirror's up. He said, it doesn't work. So I thought, oh, well, never mind, I'll still have it. So what I, ha what I saw, he had it set to um, manual control here, instead of automatic, and the mirror was up. And when I took the batteries out, I thought, well, I'll change the batteries. So I put the batteries in, two new batteries. These are little 1.5 volt batteries. And I set it to check on the top here. Get around this way. You set it to check. Nothing will happen now because there are no batteries in. It started beeping. And the little signal here was flashing. So I thought, oh, it's checking. And suddenly the mirror popped up and I could wind it on because he hadn't set it correctly and the batteries were dead. So I thought, I'll, I'll give it a treat. So I took off the base plate. So I've taken off the base plate now and I've lubricated it. Now what I do, I get one drop of sewing machine oil, and I'm not going to undo it all now, and put it into a container, something like that, and there's a very small paintbrush, and I dip it in, very small amount, and I gently do all the little cogs with the paintbrush dipped in the sewing machine oil, and then all the little levers here, don't want to disturb anything because I'm not a, ca not a camera repair mechanic, remember. All the little pivots, just touch them with sewing machine oil. And lo and behold, it creaked into life. So, now we're going to put the base plate back on. And I'll show you the rest of the camera. So there's two screws. They're the Japanese screws. Though you must put them on correctly and you have mustn't and when what's happened here this looks like something's falling out ah oh, here we are here we are the little screws are inside here I hope I don't sneeze while well, you're putting in the little screws uh, just if I can't do it in the time I'll pretend they're in but then I can't put the batteries in <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. That's a problem. I'm not a camera repair mechanic. This is a Japanese industry standard screwdriver. And I showed you how it all works with my video on the JIS screwdrivers. They're not the same as Phillips. Now, we don't want this tiny little screw to fall in inside anywhere. Excuse my hands, but I'm trying to see without my glasses on so I can focus. There, that's JIS screwed up. Here, I've done it. Thank God for that. Now, the batteries. Inside the battery cap, there's a plus sign. That means the plus sign is out. So we put the batteries in, plus side up, put on the battery cover, and with a coin of the realm, her, Her Majesty the Queen, God save the Queen. Boom, 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 boom. Well, it's not going in now. Come on, Your Majesty, help me to get this blasted battery cap on again 
Now it's got, it's, you have to be very careful. <laughs> Don't cross the thread. They're in the right way. But as usual, when we're doing it on a video, nothing works immediately. Aha! Success, folks. Thank you, Your Majesty. That one pence has got it on. Now, we'll see if the camera will creak into life. We switch it. We switch it on to check. Oh, it's beeping and the little red light comes on. That's a good sign. And we wind it. Oh, it all goes. It all fires. Yes, look at that. It's lovely, sweetly winding on because I've lubricated it with my sewing machine oil. So we'll get rid of some of this stuff here. And then we can go through the rest of the controls. There's not much on an OM10 to show actually because it's fully automatic unless you have what is known as the manual adapter for manual exposures. You get a manual adapter there like hen's teeth. You clip it on here and there. That's not a flash plug. That's where the manual adapter plugs in and you can set manual exposure. Otherwise, it's all automatic. So here's the controls at the top. You can't set any shutter speed yourself because it is aperture priority automatic. You, it's all controlled by the lens, but you can set your ASA and ISO. That's set to 200 at the moment. Gets a little white dot. You lift it up. Now it's now set to 100. Now it has, and it's an automatic shutter, or electronic shutter. There's some very faint, you need good glasses to see it. There's red there, and little blue ones there. Very faint. They are the settings for exposure compensation. And you move it towards the one you want. So if you want plus, for snow scenes, you go towards the red here. There should be there's a little plus sign here. Told you, I told you, you need a very good eyes. <laughs> that's plus. Yes. Well, then that sets it to two hundred instead of one hundred. Can't understand that. Plus should give it more exposure, shouldn't it? Then that's set to fifty there. See, I'm not an, not an Olympus expert, but this is the setting here for manual exposure and automatic exposure. That is set with a little white marker here. That is set to automatic exposure. But the guy who had it had it set to manual adapter, and there wasn't any manual adapter in it. So it's possibly one of the reasons why it didn't work, but... I think the main reason was the batteries were dead. So we set it to automatic, we press it on, follow the shutter, and then according to the aperture you set on the lens, so it gives you the shutter speed. And if you want a self timer, you put it right back here, there, it's beeping. And about, it all beeps and the little red light comes up, and about 10 seconds later, if you're lucky, the shutter will fire. There it goes. Now, underneath the mirror, the shutter, focal plane shutter, has got a checkered, when it's wound on, a checkered pattern, which measures the light reflected off the surface of the mirror and the film. Um, now, I'm not going to push it a mirror up because it doesn't want to go up anymore but I can see it it's very dim there's a, a backward a backward facing light collecting cell here which faces off to the um, that checkered pattern and also the surface of the film and that gives you through the lens metering when you have an Olympus dedicated flash fitted on the top here this are the settings for the Olympus dedicated flash. There's two contacts there. When you fit the Olympus flash in, 
it will give you through the lens automatic flash metering now I don't have an Olympus dedicate flash I only have ordinary ones with one socket instead of two so what you do well I read in the instructions if you want a non Olympus flash you set to manual adapter here and then you put your flash in there and it will fire at 1 60th of a second because there's no indication of shutter speeds on this OM10 at all because it's just an aperture priority automatic camera so then loading the film is standard loading I've shown you so many times how I load film I won't take up any more time cassette in there pull it across there we are and what happens when you finish the film there's no button underneath this one is for a motor wind attachment you don't press a button underneath to rewind your film the Olympus has a different system similar to Leica M series you turn this little doobry there and that frees up the clutch for when you rewind the film into your cassette like that so that's the Olympus method of doing the rewind and I have taken some results with this which I put on Flickr and they're quite good I've done some quite good shots with it and it's accurate exposure so now it's all been cleaned up smashing the camera is very happy and I'm getting some good results. Well, that's about it on the Olympus OM10. Thanks for watching, folks.